Stand up in the fear of God and listen to the Holy Gospel. A chapter from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the evangelist, apostle, and pure disciple. May his blessings. From the Psalms of our teacher, David the prophet and king, may his blessings be with us all. Amen. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he will be blessed on earth. You will not deliver him to the will of his enemy. Blessed. comes in the name of the Lord, our Lord, our God, and our Savior, and the King of us all, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, glory be to you. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered, like the sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out the laborers into the harvest. Glory be to God In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and Amen. We'll have a, a few minutes contemplation on tonight's Gospel. Very short, three verses exactly. So I'll read it again, because they're so beautiful. From the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 9. This is what it said. But when he saw, referring to our Lord Jesus Christ, when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered, like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. That's it. Only three verses. But let's look tonight and what is the message for us. God is sending us a message today. First of all, the first verse, it actually reveals a lot about our Lord Jesus Christ. And God is actually revealing a lot about his feelings to us and, and how he looks at us as human beings and how he deals with us. He said he moved, he saw the multitudes and he moved with compassion. So he had compassion towards the people and this is the people that were following him and listening to his teachings and listening to what he had to say and they moved from him from one place to another. And he felt sorry for them, he had compassion for them. And this is, gives us a lot of hope and comfort that our Lord is looking at us with a compassionate eye. He's not looking at us with an angry eye or a revengeful eye or a hatred eye or whatever some people think, look at God and consider God as someone who wants to punish them, someone who wants to hold anything wrong against them and someone wants to get them. 
That's not our God. That's not the God that we believe in. Our God is a compassionate God. Our God is a merciful God. And many times throughout the Gospels, this refers to our Lord have, having compassion. In other Gospel accounts, other than St. Matthew as well, it becomes in the Gospel of St. Mark, it was very clear. It became very clear. He, he actually told the disciples, I have compassion on these people. So it wasn't something implied that he moved with a compassion. He actually verbalized it and he told them, I have compassion for these people. So this gets us more close and personal to our Lord Jesus Christ and he's revealing his feelings to us. And this is because it's a personal relationship that we have with him and we need to understand and we need to deal with him as we're dealing with a best friend, someone who loves us so much, someone who has compassion and loves us so much. And then he moves on to say, he said that his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So what is the harvest and who are the laborers? Some people would say, well, he was talking to the disciples and he's telling them, you are the laborers and all these people and all this ministry is the harvest. And this is a big misconception that we have in the church. People think that there is different categories. There's a category of a servant and a category of a congregation, people who attend and leave. But the other category is only a few people who are servants. This was never the case in the church. The church from day one means everyone is a servant in the church. Every single person is a servant. Why? Because all of us are members in the body of Christ. Every single person who gets baptized and believes in God, he is a member in the body of God. So if he's a member in the body of Christ, he is a servant. He, he, he or she has an obligation to actually be a laborer in the field of God. Be in the laborer to go and collect the harvest. And the harvest are everyone who doesn't know God. The harvest is everyone who is away from God. The harvest is everyone who may call themselves Christians, but they have nothing to do with Christ. And we have an obligation, each one of us, who call him or herself a Christian, every single one of us have an obligation to go out there into the harvest and bring these souls back to Christ. You know, we come and attend meetings and attend liturgies and pray and all this, but we sometimes we don't feel obliged to bring anyone to Christ. The, the harvest is plentiful. There's a lot of people out there who are seeking the truth, who are looking for where the truth is, and they don't know, they're confused. They're seeing different people, and they're seeing different religions, and everyone's telling them something different. So, and they're actually looking for the truth, but they don't know where to start. This is our job. Our job is to ask ourselves, how many souls have I brought to Christ? It's not enough for me to come and say, well, I'm coming to church. How many souls you brought back to Christ? How many souls, even the people that were in the church, left the church? How many of us are actually seeking the return? How many of us are actually going out there and trying to find where they are and bring them back, bring them back to Christ? And the people out there who are searching for the truth, have we been a guide to them? Have we actually been what our Lord Jesus Christ commanded us to be a light of the world? He commanded us, you be a light of the world. I'm the light of the world and you are the light of the world. Be like your Father in heaven. I want you to be a light of the world. I want you to guide people back to me. This is what our Lord Jesus Christ is telling us. And he's saying that there's plenty of work to do, but unfortunately the laborers are few. Why? Because everyone is relying on someone else to do the job. Yeah, this is the job of a Buna. This is the job of the Sunday school servant. This is not my job. My job is just come to attend and pray and leave. This is not my job. But this is a big misconception, and we need to correct that in our minds. That we are servants everywhere and anywhere. When you walk in the street, you actually can be a servant of Christ. You can actually be a guide to someone. There's many people who they just need a, a guide. Someone needs just to point them the way, tell them this is the way to Christ, and they'll come running. But sometimes we think, it's not my job. I'm not going to say anything. I'm embarrassed. Or maybe I'm going to be judged for it. Or maybe they're going to ridicule Christ or Christianity. And we take a step back from that. 
But it's the, the harvest, we're going to be accountable for that. We're going to say, God's going to ask us. And I, I heard something very nice on Judgment Day, when God's going to come and judge us, He's going to say, okay, you're coming, you want to come to heaven. How many people are coming with you? How many people can I record, can I actually note down or write down next to your name? I'm going to say, say, God, I'm here, I've been obeying commandments, I've been a, a good boy or a good girl. Excellent. How many people have you brought to me? How many people are coming with you? Imagine someone has a long queue of people behind them saying, God, this is all with me. This is the people I brought to you. Imagine the reward. Look at it this way. And also I had something very nice. It got something like this. It says that we all do miracles. We're all capable of doing miracles. We do miracles. You know you can actually open the eyes of someone. You know how? When you return them to Christ and the eyes will be opened, they will see Christ. Then you've made someone who's blind. You gave them their side back. You can heal a paralyzed man or a woman, someone who hasn't been coming to church, and they start coming to church because of you. You've made that paralyzed, spiritually paralyzed person come back to Christ. That's how we're healing. That's how we're doing miracles. And the list will go on. We can take everything. Someone who's away from God, someone who hasn't come to church for a long time, that person will be dead spiritually. You can raise someone from the dead, from the spiritual dead, by bringing them back to Christ, to church. We are asked to be the link, the bridge, to bring people to Christ. We don't get the glory. God will get the glory. But this is our job. Our job is not to be content with ourselves, with our spiritual life, but we have to bring people along. We have to preach by our actions more than our words. But this is everyone's responsibility. And if you don't know how to do it, then educate yourself. Then get to know. Many people are scared to start talking about God because they, they get scared. What if they get asked a difficult question they don't know the answer to? Well, instead of being scared and taking a step back, why don't you understand your religion more in depth? Read your Bible. Understand the Bible. Do Bible studies. Go to the depth of the church teachings. Be equipped to be able to answer those who ask you any question instead of running away from that responsibility. This is our chance to build ourselves up spiritually for ourselves and to preach to others. And here our Lord Jesus Christ saying, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So tonight we're praying that God will send laborers to his harvest because his harvest is ready and we just need laborers to go and collect the harvest. So let's start with ourselves tonight. That's each one of us. I'm sure if we stop and think carefully, think about even people who are close to you. Start with the close family circle. How many people can you actually try to return them back to Christ? I'm sure every one of us know at least one person who they can talk to about Christ and they can try to bring them back to church. And let's make this our mission that we will work on it. So once the church opens its doors again, we'll bring, we'll come back, hopefully, much better spiritually and we're not coming alone. We'll come and bring with us those people who have been away from God. And this is the best time to talk to them because everyone is feeling that the power of God and feeling how weak we are as human beings during these difficult times. So this is the time when people are more willing to listen and the hearts are more softer to listen to any talk about God. Before, no one could mention the word of God, but now people are more willing and accept, accepting more to hear the word of God. So this is our job, our time to work during this. So when the church opens the door, we can bring a lot of people back to Christ, and this is the true role of us as Christians. Glory be to God forever. Amen. Alleluia, <laughs> 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil through Jesus Christ our Lord. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son and Lord God the Father, who has broken every one of our sins through his saving love, giving sufferings. He breathed into the face of his sainted disciples and holy apostles and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now also our Master, giving grace to holy apostles to those for a time, labor in the priesthood of the Holy Church, of give sin upon the earth, and to bind the lose every bond of iniquity. Now also I to treat you goodness or love of mankind. For your servants, my fathers, my brethren, my weakness, those who bow their heads before your holy glory, dispense us their mercy, and lose every bond of our sins. And if you have committed any sin against you knowingly or unknowingly, also anger of heart, whether indeed the word of faith hardness, O Master, who knows the weakness of men, as a good one lover of mankind, O God, grant us the forgiveness of our sins, bless us, purify us, absolve us, and all your people, fill us with your fear, and stretch us for your goodwill. Fear our God, the glory, honor, and dominion, and worship are due to you, good Father, and the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, and one is with you now at all times, unto the edge of all edges. Amen. Amin kirya leison, kirya leison, kirya leison, amin alleluia. Agyom nev mati kenin kea ike stose on astone on on amin teno ashe volengo emos jehov en choice. Chresos eboro en tebo, aftom fe volgen yeth mount gen beho en majom. Sotien mono on ainan, kirie leison, kirie leison, kirie flogison, amin smo erois, smo erois, te matan yakoni, goen piesmo. Chresos penoti, amin ese shobi. O King of Peace, grant us your peace, set your peace upon us, forgive us our sins. We do the power, the glory, the meaning forever. Amen. O Lord, hear us pray. Thankfully, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, for thine is the King, power and glory forever. Amen. So now we've finished the Vespers. So we'll start the Midnight Prayer from the Agbeya. Uh, 
uh, we start from the introduction and uh, arise or you children of light uh, together we say it together from the Coptic reader um, we say together arise or you children, children of, of the light, light praise, praise the Lord of hosts that he may grant us the salvation of our souls when we stand in the flesh before you take away from our minds the sleep of forgetfulness grant us alertness O Lord in order that we may understand how to stand up before you at the time of prayer and send up to you the appropriate doxology mm -hmm. and win the forgiveness of our many sins. Mm -hmm. Glory to you, lover of mankind. Behold the bliss of the Lord, O you, the servants of the Lord, who stand in the house of the Lord in the course of the house of our God in the night. And lift up your hands, O you, sins. And bless the Lord, the Lord shall bless you out of Zion, he who made heaven and earth. Glory be to you, O lover of mankind. Let my supplication come near before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my petition come before you. Revive me according to your word. Let my lips flow with praise. When you have taught me your ordinance, let my tongue speak of your words. For all your commandments are righteous. Let your hand be for saving me, for I have desired your commandments. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my meditation. My soul shall live and praise you, and your judgment shall help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commandments. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, and now forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Glory be to you, a good one, lover of mankind. Hail to your Mother, the Virgin, and all your saints. Glory be to you, all the Trinity, have mercy upon us. Let God arise, let all his enemies be scattered. And let all who hate his holy name flee before his face. But let your people be in blessings, thousands of thousands and ten thousand times ten thousands, doing your will. O Lord, you shall open my lips and my mouth shall declare your praise. Alleluia. The service of the first watch of the blessed midnight hour we offer to Christ our King, our God, beseech me to forgive us our sins. From the Psalms, what did you deliver the prophet and king, his best will, Solomon? We say with Psalm 119. We say part number two. How shall a young man straighten his way, way by keeping your words? With, with my whole heart, heart I have sought after you. you. Do not Do cast me away from your commandments. I have hidden your words in my heart that I have not sinned against you. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your ordinances. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have delighted in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I shall, I shall speak, speak of your, your commandments, commandments and consider, consider your ways. I will meditate on your ordinances and I will shall not forget, forget you. your words. Glory be to you, a lover of mankind. a chapter from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, Miss Bezul Salamin. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Arise and go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. 
And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who already went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Agathos name be abnev my thoab, Jaton Kaksotimon, Naina. Behold, the bridegroom is coming at midnight. Blessed is the servants whom he finds watching, but at he whom he finds sleeping is unworthy of going with him. Therefore, take heed, my O oh my soul, that you may not fall into deep sleep. Then be cast out of thy kingdom, but watch and cry out, saying, Holy, holy, holy are you, o God, for the sake of the Theodokes have mercy on us. <laughs> So be mindful of that awesome day and wake up and light your lamp with the oil of joy. For not now when the voice will call upon you, saying, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, so take heed, my soul, not to fall asleep. Lest they stand um, outside looking like the five foolish virgins, but watch you through, um, entreating that you may meet Christ the Lord with your joy, and he may grant you the willing of his true and heavenly glory. <laughs> Pet of our salvation, O Theodox, the Virgin, the mighty and the impregnable fortress, apologize the counsel of the adversaries and transform the sorrow of your servant into joy. Fortify our nation and defend our governance and, and intercede for the peace of the world. For our hope, O Theodokos. <laughs> Comfort of the Spirit of Truth, who is present in all places and fills all the treasure of good things and the, li and the life giver. Graciously come and dwell in us and us from all the five good one and save us all. <laughs> Just as you were with your disciples, O Savior, and gave them peace, graciously come also and be with us and grant us your peace and save us and deliver us our souls. <laughs> Stand your holy sanctuary, we consider standing in heaven at the altar of Christ, you are the gate of heaven, and for us the gate of mercy. <laughs> Holy, holy, the Lord of Sabbath, heaven and earth are full of your groan and honor. Have mercy on us, O God, the Father, the Almighty. All change and mercy upon us. O Lord God, the first be with us. We have no, no helper in our hardships and tribulations, but you absorb, forgive, remit, O God, our transgressions, those we have committed willingly and those which we have committed unwillingly, those we have committed knowingly and those which are committed unknowingly. The hidden and manifest, O Lord, forgive us for the sake of your holy name, which is called upon us, and let it be according to your mercy, O Lord, and not according to our sins. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The second watch of the blessed midnight hour, we offer to Christ the King of God. We seek to give our sins from the psalm of David to the prophet and king. May his blessing us. Amen. We'll pray the second psalm in the sunset prayer, the eleventh hour. Second 
I lift up my eyes to the mountains, mountains from where my help shall come. come. My help shall come from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and your keeper will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord shall keep you, the Lord shall cast a shelter upon your right hand. The sun shall not burn you by day, neither the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from every evil. The Lord shall keep your soul. The Lord shall keep you from your coming out and your from this time forth and even forevermore. Alleluia. Look, so I a reading from the other gospel according to St. Luke. May his best meet us all. Amen. And here is out of a synagogue and entered into Simon's house, and Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they requested him concerning her, and he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her, and immediately she arose and served them. When the sun was setting, all those who had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And devils came out of many, crying out and saying, You are the Christ, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, did not allow them to speak, for they knew that he was the Christ. If the righteous one scarcely saved, where shall other sinner appear the burden ahead of the day? I did not endure because of the weakness. Give me, Lord, many fountains of tears as you gave in the past. The sinful woman, make me worthy to wash your feet, which liberated me from the path of straying, and to offer you a precious fragrant oil, and gain through repentance a pure life, so that I may hear that voice full of joy. Your faith has saved you. <laughs> When I realize my many wicked deeds and the thought of the awesome judgment comes to my heart, a tremble takes hold of me, and I take refuge in you, O God, the lover of mankind. So do not turn away your face from me. Aren't you too alone and without sin? Grant humbleness to my poor soul before the end comes and save me. <laughs> the heavens bless you, full of grace, the bride who was never married, and we too glorify your incomprehensible giving birth. O Theodokos, the mother of mercy and salvation, intercede for salvation in our souls. <laughs> Amen. O heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who is present in all places and fills all, the treasure of good things and the giver of life, graciously come and dwell within us and purify us from all defilement, O good one, and save our souls. O Sabbatrinke, just as you were with your disciples, O Savior, and gave them peace. Graciously come also and be with us and grant us your peace and save us and deliver our souls. Amen. Whenever we stand in your holy sanctuary, we are considered standing in heaven. O Theotokos, you are the gate of heaven. Open for us the gate of mercy. We ask your Lord, tears and have mercy upon us. Amen. Holy, 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 holy,
Holy Lotus of Earth, Heaven and Earth, of full of your glory and honor. Have mercy upon us, O God, the Father of the Pantocrat, O Holy Trinity, have mercy upon us. O Lord God of hosts, we all us who have no other helper in our hardships and tribulations, but you absolve, forgive, and remit, O God, of our transgressions, those which you have committed willingly and those which you have committed unwillingly. Those which you have committed unknowingly and those which you have committed unknowingly, the hidden and the manifest, O Lord, forgive us for the sake of your holy name, which is called upon us, that it be according to your mercy, O Lord, and not according to our sins. Heaven, heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us on to temptation. But deliver us from evil through Jesus Christ our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. Shreesan and Ab Shreesan and the servants of the third watch of the blessed midnight hour we offer to Christ our King, our God. Beseech me to forgive us our sin from the Psalms, for the truth of the prophet and King, Miss Bismillah We say the first one. Out of the depth I have cried to you, O Lord. O Lord, Lord hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you, O Lord, should mark my iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? Who through you is forgiveness for your name's sake. I have waited for you, O Lord. My soul have waited for you, Lord. My soul has hoped in the Lord from the morning watch to night. From the morning watch let Israel hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is mercy, and great is his redemption. And, and he, he shall, shall redeem Israel, Israel from, from all his iniquities. Alleluia. Luke saw you, someone, a chapter from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, may his best be amen. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell what you have and give alms. Provide yourself money bags which do not grow old, a treasure in the heavens that does not fail. Where no thief approaches, nor moth corrupts. For where your treasures is, there your heart will be also. Let your loins be girded and your lamps burning. And you yourself be like men who wait for their masts when he will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, they may open to him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom their master, when he comes, will find them watching. Surely I say to you that he shall gird himself and have them sit down to eat and when, and will come and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and and not have allowed his house to be broken into. You therefore be ready also, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not think. Then Peter said to him, Lord, do not speak this parable only to us or to all people. And the Lord said, who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his master will make ruler over his household to give them their portion of food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master when he comes when he comes will find so doing. Truly I say to you that he will make him ruler over them, over all that he has. But if that servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat the men servants and maid servants and to eat, drink, to drink, to drink and be drunk and master so that servant will come in the day when he is not looking for him and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in two, and appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Glory be to God forever and ten. With a compassionate eye, O Lord, look at my weakness and for sure earthly my life will end. And my deeds I shall have no salvation. Therefore, I beseech you, O Lord, with a merciful eye, look at my weakness, my humility and my poverty and my sojourn and save me. Look at my judge is present, take heed, O my soul, awake and consider that awesome hour. For in the day of judgment there will be no mercy. 
mercy on those who were not merciful. Therefore, have compassion on me, O Savior, for you alone are the lover of mankind. Kenin kai kesto se onasto ne onon amin. The gate of life, the honor of Theotokos, deliver from the hardship those who are in faith. Take refuge in you so that we might glorify your immaculate birth of Christ for the salvation of our souls. Kenin kai kesto se onasto. Amen. The heavenly King, that comes from the Spirit of Truth, which spreads in all places and fills all the treasury of good things, and the life giver graciously come and within us, purify us from all the fire and good, and save our souls. Just as you were with your disciples of Savior and gave them peace, graciously come also and be with us and grant us your peace and save us and deliver our souls. Whenever we stand in your holy sanctuary, we consider standing in heaven as the altar of corners, you are the gate of heaven, and for us the gate of mercy. a chapter from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, in his message Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples. I like to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. Holy, holy, holy Lord of Sabbath, heaven and earth are full of your glory and honor. Have mercy on us, O God the Father the Almighty, who returns and mercy on us. Although God of us be with us, we need help in our hardships and tribulations, but you absolve, forgive, remit, O God, our transgressions, those in which we have committed willingly and those which we have committed unwillingly. Those which we have committed knowingly and those which we have committed unknowingly, the hidden and manifest. O Lord, forgive us for the sake and for your holy name, which is called upon us. Let it be according to your mercy, O Lord, not according to our sins. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O oh Lord and Master Jesus Christ, the living eternal Son of God, enlighten our minds to understand your love giving understand your love giving words. Raise up from the darkness of sin which ruins the soul. Make us worthy to become upright in good deeds. At the time we were coming to judge the world, make us worthy to hear of hearing the voice full of joy, saying, Come to me, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you before the foundation of the world. Yes, Lord, grant us in the hour to be without fear, anxiety, or condemnation. And do not judge us according to our many iniquities. We alone are compassionate, long suffering, and exceedingly merciful. We ask you through the intercession of Our Lady, the Holy Cross, and Mary, and the intercession of all the choir of your saints. Amen. Have mercy on us, O God. God. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, who at all times and in every hour in heaven and on earth is worshipped and glorified. Christ our God, the good, the long suffering, the abundant in mercy, and the great in compassion, who loves the righteous and has mercy on the sinners, of whom I am chief. Who does not wish death for the sinner, but rather that he return and live, who causes salvation for the promise of good things to come. Lord, receive from our prayers at this hour and every hour. Ease our lives and guide us to fulfill your commandments. Sanctify our spirits, cleanse our bodies, conduct our thoughts, purify our intentions, heal our diseases, forgive us our sins, deliver us from evil, evil grief and distress of heart. Surround us by your holy angels that they may they, they may camp and be guided and guided and guided and attain the unity of faith and knowledge of imperceptible and infinite glory. For you are blessed forever. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to stand before you tonight, Lord, in your holy house. We ask you, Lord, to open the doors of the church for us, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to make us, Lord. Come deeper, Lord, into the relationship with you. We ask you, Lord, to help us, Lord, to really understand what's important in life, what's important, Lord, to prioritize, Lord, our relationship with you, Lord. 
We ask Lord to be with everyone who needs your help, Lord. Those who are going through a difficult time, be with them, support them, Lord. We ask, Lord, for those who are seeking the truth, who are searching for you. We ask you, Lord, to send laborers, Lord, into your harvest. We ask you, Lord, to help us, each one of us, Lord, be a light, a light in the world, Lord, and to guide everyone back to you. We ask you through the prayers and intercessions of all the saints and the angels. Hear us, Lord, we pray thankfully. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.